So, like I said, how does all this work? Well, as you can see, you have all these rotating rods, and there's three of them. Now, these two, on each side, they rotate for them resonance chamber windows that we saw, and then this one in the centre is in control of the, the, uh, the flapping main window. So, let's pull it apart and have a look. So the main mechanism has two covers, these two covers, and it has loads of little other windows, that's a, an end stop cap for um, machining purposes, etc. So what we'll do is we'll crack this off, and we'll get the whole system apart, so we can have a look. It's quite a complicated system. Investigations as we go along instead of me just pulling out the whole system so you can see as if you were taking it apart. Go. So, this is for our main window, and as you can see, it's just an actuator rod there. And this, let me pull you in a bit closer because that's quite a cool thing to see. So you can see the gasket, and you can see one of the major issues in a sense is that it's absolutely full of crap, and that's because the exhaust gases um, unfortunately enter this section, there's nothing really they can do about it, it'd be pretty much impossible to seal this and make it function exactly in the same way. So you've got this carrier arm here, you've got this... Um, pore section that moves it in and out, um, but as you can see this is miles away, this is miles away from this pin here, and again we've gone from going linear motion to rotational motion back to linear motion, so it's quite a complicated bit of kit. If we move to the other side, and we follow this shaft to its beginnings, you'll see what's behind here. And this is also pretty cool. I'll just put these horrible screws back in and clean them. So on this side, so now we see how the main window opens. Obviously, there's something going on in here. I don't like all the extension bar on it. And uh, we'll be able to have a look at that. And what is beautiful is all these are coming straight off. By the look of the bolts, no one's ever undone these since the factory, which is nice. They're just popping clean off. Um, I would recommend that if you are cleaning or um, reconditioning this system or there's something wrong, that you do replace every single gasket. Because um, you get leakage. You get leakage in here and you're kind of in a world of trouble really. Um, I wouldn't recommend using silicon either because a lot of these things get pretty hot. So when this cover comes off, you can see it's just a simple cover, but as you can see yet again we've got this horrible deposit. But what you can see is you can see the port, I don't know if you can see that, you can see that window, these rotational res resonance ports and you can see them turning just like so. Oops, no you can't see. There we go. I'm trying to hold the cylinder at the same time. But, surprisingly, there's not much in here. Or, or so it seems. It seems like there's nothing really in here. But what there is, let's see if I can get a good shot of it. It's all black and cruddy. Is we have a gear, which is obviously attached to this shaft that we've seen pull that window up and down. But inside here, there is a rack, and uh, we'll get that out so you can see the rack, but we'll do that in a minute because the rest of the system's got to come apart. But as you can see, this is properly, properly integrated. Um, so, let's get the rest of it. So what this is, that I've just taken off, what this is on the side is this is um, nothing to do with the KIP system, this is a... Um, well, it looks like a core plug for the water jacket, so if you ever wanted to enter the water jacket, you can do. 
via that for some reason, unless there's an adaptation they were thinking of um, putting in but didn't. So we'll take the end for the main shaft that goes through there, like so. So just like with the other one we've seen the rack, that's exactly what runs through here. So there's a rack that runs through here, just like a steering rack in a sense. And then all these shafts have gears on. And that's what makes them rotate like so. If we go to the top end, I don't know if you can see. So this is all carbon mixed with oil. It's all this black and rubbish. I can see this getting cleaned out. There's a washer there, like so. And this will make us. This will give us access to the uh, the port inside. Are you gonna come off? No, you're not gonna come off, are you, little bugger? Get an Allen key to take that window off. Can we lift that out? Tool now. There we go. So we need to take this fork carrier there off and then we'll be able to pull out the window. So we crack this off. And it's really gummed up. Absolutely horrible. Now if you've never done this before, it's a good idea to take pictures or even mark stuff where things live. It's proper gun done there, isn't it? Come on, little sod. Bear with me as I try and get this off. So now we've got this screw. Um, from here removed, and the good thing is, is that yes, it's not key weight etc., but it doesn't need to be because that only lines up in one direction. What you need to do is pull the arm out, pull the actual port out, and then this pin can come out because this will fall further, and then this can all come out. It's covered in bloody oil and crap. So you slide the pin out, get your fork out there. This is key weight. Although it's not, you can just see in there it's got a, a square bottom, but it's not key weird to this in any way, which is a bit stupid. So that's that section there. This window now comes out, so now you can actually see the flap. So that's the flap there, and we'll remove that pin, it probably needs pressing out by the look of it. But you can see all the carbon and scum. But this is our drop window, and that's our top cylinder window, you can see there. That wasn't looking. So that's our drop window with our little flappy paddle. And that runs in guides inside there, which sits in like so, which can't fall any further. But obviously, this rod needs to go in first. I'm getting covered in crap. Oops, we've dropped the window. So the whole thing sits in there, like so, and then you put your pin in, etc. Like I just used the opposite of assembly, uh, disassembly. But we'll pull this out. So now we've got all that out, let's get our main rack out. All this needs cleaning because this is absolutely atrocious. Um, all this needs cleaning. Let's get our main rod out. So the main rod is a pain in the ass. And what we need to do is we need to take this E clip so we can push this rod pretty much all the way through. Now there's a seal bearing on here with a nut. The first thing I want to do is get this 
the clip off. Come on, don't be a sod. There's the e-clip. So the e-clips come off the end, which means this washer, the actual guard itself, should just pop off, but it's got a burr on it, which is lovely. So that's the guide. Comes off. I've got another annoying ink clip to stop it going all the way through. I don't know if they do ink clip removers, but I should have one if they do. There's another ink clip there, and now all this is off, we should be able to push our. Must be a stop on the rod. So the next thing we need to do is remove this stop. Now, if that isn't going to go and you spin that once, stop, get an impact socket, or an impact driver, and uh, remove that. Alright, so the next thing you need to do, <coughs> we've got access to that window. Before we start shoving this pin through and get rid of that blocker, we need to stick your screwdriver in or something not too hard and just push down on the rotating windows and you'll see this collar here you see that, that comes off like so, so does this one oh it's a bit of a pain in the ass and they do have o-rings in them and kind of that's what you're trying to overcome is the uh, Where's my um, circle? Oh, let's just get something in there. Nothing monstrous, it doesn't need a big shove or anything. It just needs something to be able to push down on the port. Just to, there we go, get past the, uh, the o ring seal. And now you'll be able to see these rotating. Oh, you can't see. Well done, job done, job done well, there we go. So now you'll be able to see the uh, how the mechanism works with the rack and pinion etc. So what we need to do now is pull these puppies out, off the, uh, pull the next one out. So this gear is a reversal gear because obviously if you have the rack and the pinion they're both turned the same, the same way you can't see, there we go so this is a reversal gear with this half moon wedge here that goes in here and that just basically sits in there and this rides off the pinion, not this gear this gear rides off this gear so this reverses the, um, the, the directional movement of what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to spin so now what we do is we get our punch. When we tap this through, it rotates this part, but doesn't rotate the next one because that's a smaller gear. So as you can see, the shaft comes through. We should be able to pull that out. It's covered in crap and carbon, so we can't. And then we're going to try and ride it over the top of this gear, which is a pain in the ass. So if we, we grab it very gingerly, we can leave the shaft there where it is for the time being, and then you need to pull these gears out. You just make sure that the rack isn't grabbing the last disc gear here, otherwise you won't be able to pull anything out. So let me go and get some grips and we'll uh, 